welcome to the Acid Trash Jamboree and to a second edition of Box Sets of Doom where we take a peek inside another massive collection of intriguing music. So up for discussion today is the Heliopolar Egg, a five-disc behemoth of mid-70s archival live recordings from the free improv duo of Hartmut Gierken and Michael Ranter. Okay, so despite having had this box for the best part of a decade now, I admit that I'm still woefully behind in properly learning about the backgrounds of these two, though a cursory bit of research shows that they're both extremely interesting people with many strings to their bows. Now, Ranta was born in 1942 in Minnesota in the US and spent his early life studying music before going travelling in his mid-twenties, eventually making Germany his new home in the late 70s and collaborating with avant-garde heavyweights like Karl Heinz Stockhausen along the way. On the other hand, the late Gierken was born in 1939 and in his 82 years on this planet managed to rack up a truly formidable CV. Yeah, a quick glance at his Wikipedia alone shows that he was an enormous talent who had fingers in many artistic pies, again collaborating with legends like Sun Ra, as well as writing plays, making films and organising cultural events. Gierken was another keen traveller and spent time living in Egypt and Afghanistan in the 60s and 70s, which would explain why these two eventually came together and ended up performing the concerts that make up this box set. So, without further ado, let's crack open the Heliopolar Egg. Okay, so disc one, recorded in Tehran, Delhi and Calcutta deceptively eases us into its sprawling world of atonality with long peals of spectral whistle which are occasionally interrupted by rude horn parps. Things gradually getting more sinister and electronically inclined, beginning with playful, echoed percussive taps before huge washes of synthesizer and collages of sampled voices and ethnic instrumentation blast us off into space the piece teetering on the brink of pure noise as assorted anguished yelps and screeches attempt to punctuate the harsh, ring-modulated electronics before things wind down again and the duo take us safely back to terra firma. Yeah, exhilarating stuff, and that's only the first 13 minutes. The second piece follows a similar pattern to begin with voices and clanging metallic sonorities being fed through the duo's echo units whilst liminal tones drone away readily. The noisy outbursts are more fleeting here, however, the piece being mostly content sloshing about in early clusterish waters with synths zapping and bubbling over those ever hovering drones as assorted chimes and tinkles come and go. The third piece, the shortest on the whole box at a slight 4 minutes 33 seconds, John Cage styley, is much more down to earth, consisting entirely of acoustic percussion. Again, the duo working overtime to make it sound like there's a whole fleet of players up on the stage, joyously hammering away rhythmically to begin, then going more freeform and mysterious in the second half. Yeah, this is a mere palate cleanser though, compared to what follows. Two gargantuan, 20 minute plus sonic beasts. The first of which starts firmly in a Taj Mahal traveller's zone with ominous rumblings, possibly from a heavily electronically treated piano skulking about in the shadows, gradually building in intensity before ebbing away from whence they came as playful percussion and xylophone figures add a touch of colour to the otherwise monochromatic and bleak sonic landscape. Gierken and Ranta are quite content to stay here for a good while, occasionally punctuating events with stray piano notes and distant woodwind calls as the xylophone starts to work itself into a frenzy, nearly taking us into Lark's tongues here, a King Crimson in the process. The mood then darkens again, the sounds slithering about together like a den of tiny snakes, and the volume levels occasionally rise into the point where you think things are going to kick off again, though in the end, the duo resists the temptation. 
the fifth and final pieces, also mostly pretty subdued, starting off like an ambient abstraction of Ennio Morricone's music from The Night Train Murders, with melancholic, harmonica-esque smears of sound, drifting woozily around a melange of glassy and metallic percussion textures. Again, after teasing us as if they're on the brink of the mother of all freakouts, the pair simmer down to near silence, soon moving into a pleasing proto-free folk zone as drum hits, shakers and violin plucks pepper a fluttering electronic drone, again simmering down to near nothingness until a long section of jarring gong strikes wakes us up from our slumberous state. Now, disc two, recorded entirely in Dakar in Bangladesh, opens in full-on industrial nightmare mode, with massive distorted synth pulses and flimmering tones swooping about restlessly like out-of-control helicopters, gradually calming down as rusted sonorities pile in to fill the void. The duo simply can't help but bring the noise again, though, overlaying this bleak sonic backdrop with piercing high oscillator frequencies, terrifying sheets of prepared piano mayhem and wailing voices from the abyss, the whole thing starting to resemble some fantasy freak jam between Conrad Schnitzler, Throbbing Gristle and Don Bradshaw Leather. Geerken and Ranta were obviously having too much of a blast to even consider calming down again, as track two picks up right where the first one ended, the pair still kicking up a huge electronic storm, as further blocks of pounding piano eventually poke their way out of the chaos. Again, very Don Bradshaw-esque, touching on both jazz themes and all-out atonal classical madness. For a short time, the duo sync up with Ranta adding some steady percussion to Geerken's modal groove. Then it's back to the freeform nastiness, the performers eventually running out of steam and the wild synth backing now getting a bit long in the tooth, after which the editor wisely hits the faders. Disc 3, recorded in Manila, again comprises of just two extended tracks, both of which feature conga accompaniment from guest musician Jose Pepito Bosch. On the first piece, Bosch adds a rich, rhythmic heartbeat to the now very subdued electronic dronage, eventually dropping out to let Geerken and Ranta's pan-ethnic jumble of percussion and modal violin take centre stage for a good while, the track beginning to sound alarmingly like some Vibra Cathedral orchestra jam recorded 25 years too soon. Bosch does slip back in after a time, though. By this point, the piece has pretty much said everything it's going to say. The performers again kind of tread in water until its conclusion. Then the second piece is a lot darker in tone. Again, bringing to mind the Taj Mahal travellers as ominous horns of doom, intertwined with the same kind of pitch blackened death chants that cropped up in the early work of Current 93. Bosch bides his time until the dark clouds dissipate, congering away passionately as a shimmering oscillator tone brings to mind the dreamy organ score to Jess Franco's Oasis of the Zombies. The trio then gradually turn up the heat with incessant wind chime tinklings and distressed elephant sax abuse, taking things close to boiling point before the piece goes off piste again, mostly wallowing around in a woozy, soporific ambient state for the remainder, with gong and xylophone strikes skitting atop the persistent electronic haze. Now, by the time of the fourth disc, it's back to the two man lineup, this one containing recordings from Seoul, South Korea. Yet again, there are just two monster extended pieces here. The first one mostly hinges around a rich electronic drone, the duo once again floating us up into zero gravity, either omming along like alien throat singers or chucking in the odd echoed string pluck and xylophone ping but mostly keeping things very meditative and zen-like. As the piece winds on, the main drone fades, closing out with grumbling electronics, underpinning a flurry of woodblock knocking. 
in sharp contrast. The second piece begins in a rather intimidating fashion with huge washes of gongs and cymbals, transporting us into the midst of some ancient cultic sacrificial ceremony. As freeform drums join the fray and our old friend the shimmering oscillator tone hovers in, adding some extra mystery to proceedings. Occasional samples of spoken voices and dramatic orchestral music up the creep factor as agonised horn groans billow out, turning ever more forlorn as the piece becomes sparser, until all that's left is the sound of Geerkin and Ranta desolately calling out to one another with their instruments, like two wounded beasts lost in the wilderness. And finally, Disc 5, recorded in Osaka, Japan, is a bit different from the others in that it's partly comprised of interpretations of works by Japanese composers. The 10-minute extract from Toshi Ichianagi's piece, Arrangements, is a rather tense and dynamic affair performed mostly on acoustic percussion instruments with occasional moments of gong-smashing high drama blaring out in amidst the otherwise quiet and ominous soundscape. The performers eventually feeding in subtle arcs of feedback as well as some AMM-style low-key radio chatter, which had a bit of sonic interest and stopped the piece from stagnating. Next up is a stab at Shoko Shida's Lonely Mountain, another percussion-based piece which mostly plays out in a similar mysterious fashion to arrangements, albeit without the jarring crescendos and with rumbling clouds of piano well and truly darkening the performance space, taking us firmly into the horror movie soundtrack zone. Now, the 12 minutes Same Trains is about as close as this collection gets to traditional free jazz, with thoroughly ugly clusters of atonal piano being hammered out over your classic kit tumbling down a flight of stairs type of freeform drumming. This piece has its moments, but mostly just sounds like two solo improvisations haphazardly shoved together, as if the players were paying little attention to one another. Yeah, this approach can occasionally pay dividends, but here, to my ears at least, it just sounds like a sloppy mess. The last piece, entitled Coda appropriately enough, features a guest appearance from Ichianagi himself, who provides synthesizer. Opening with spacey clouds of pure pulsing electronics, Geerkin and Ranta are soon on hand to add splashes of violin and horn that once again, they demonstrate great restraint and keep their contributions subtle, rather than blazing away over Toshi's increasingly minimal contributions. Connoisseurs of esoteric experimental music may also be aware of an album entitled Improvisation, September 1975, which features both Ichianagi and Ranta teaming up with Takahisa Kasugi, the legendary Fluxus member and founder of the likes of Groupon Gaku and the amazing Taj Mahal travellers who I've barely shut up about during this video. So yeah, that album predates the Japanese performance on the Helio Polar Egg by just over a year and is well worth hearing. Okay, so that just about wraps up my thoughts on this box set. On the whole, this is just what tickles my fancy. Yeah, sprawling, exploratory, multicultural brew of free jazz, folk, electronics and pure, unclassifiable weirdness. As I've said though, it's certainly not 100% killer material, with Geerkin and Ranta occasionally running out of ideas and sounding like they're just going through the motions. But that's improv for you, I suppose. One minute you're thoroughly in the zone and flying... The next you're morosely banging on a tambourine, wondering what you're going to have for your dinner. But yeah, as well as the comparison points that I've touched on already, if you appreciate the similarly heady, eclectic sounds of acts like Actuala, Anima Sound, Dom, Limbus, as well as the most way out free folk stuff from this century, then yeah, I can highly recommend that you check this one out if you haven't done already. 
Anyways, as I keep saying, there's plenty more content like this in the pipeline, so if that sounds your thing, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Thanks as ever for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Acid Trash Jamboree.